Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm very delighted to be here today in this such a beautiful gathering. And I really thank for inviting me to come and say a few words about the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And about his message and also the importance of unity in the light of his message. There are two main words in my topic. The prophetic message and unity. When I looked at, at the message, which is quite widespread, it's very difficult to summarize his message. But however, looking at his statements, what he has said, that has also been beautifully preserved by his companions and by his family members. He sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, La tadkhuluna al-jannah. That you cannot enter the paradise. Of course, this was what he came for. He came to get humanity out of the darkness towards the light. So that's what he said, La tadkhuluna al-jannah. That you cannot enter the paradise. Until, unless, what you do? Until you love with one another. So it means that his message belongs to love. Then he further goes to say, alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, Shall I not tell you the how you can increase that love? And then he says, Afshu salama baynakum. The spread Islam amongst you. What is salam? That's the question. Spread Islam amongst you. What is Islam? In literal meaning, it's saying, Aslamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. Wa rahmatullahi and his blessings وَبَرَكَاتُهُ <clears throat> and his fadl upon you but in actual sense the meaning is that when we offer hand to say Islam we pass the message of peace that you are safe from me You wouldn't be hurt. You wouldn't face any difficulty from me. That is the message of peace. And that's what he also said. When he, because he came to show success to people. The actual final destination and he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. Say, there is no God but Allah, and you will be successful. My dear brothers and sisters, ignorance is really a huge problem for humanity. Not only for Muslims. You know here, message has been repeat, repeated. The non-Muslims should read Islam. I would now rather say the Muslims should read Islam more. <laughs> to be honest, they need more to study Islam. And of course, here, the world situation has also been mentioned. That what type of issues and problems that humanity is going through. 
The old had also been created by humanity. But however, we are there to solve them out as well. We are there to play our own role, what we can do, how we can participate, how we can play our part, that's important. So that's the prophetic message that carries the solution. But that needs to be studied with open mind and, and open eyes, not close. When we have decisions and solutions before reading, then we cannot find the solutions, the right solutions. So with, with open heart and open mind, we need to study Islam. And of course all, the media is playing a very negative role at this point. And I really appreciate those that who to clarify, who try to clarify the, the misconceptions about Islam. Because Islam is the message of peace. Must not forget the boy, the Jewish boy, who served Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And he, when he passed away, he alayhi salatu wa salam goes on his qabr and pray for him. On his grave and pray for him. Must also not for, forget and, for, uh, and ignore the delegation came from Syria of uh, Christians who came to see him. And he, alayhi salatu wasalam, accommodated them within his masjid, within his mosque. And then, when it was for, for them, their prayer time, he, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, said, you may offer your prayer here in, the mos in this mosque. So this deen, basically, this religion of Islam, accommodates everyone. This is why Sayyidina Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala an, he said, the mo our enemies are not Christian and Jews, but the biggest enemies are the ignorance and ego. And sometimes we feel that we know everything. But some practical aspects, to be honest, that opened the eyes. When I just went upstairs to make wudu, I was not able to find the how to open the tab. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And for two minutes it took me, but still I couldn't find. <laughs> and then I uh, thank, thank for the brother who came and then he helped me out. To, that was under the foot. So sometimes the things are, you know, very small, but we don't know. And we think that we know everything. Quran says, وَاَتَصِّمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا and also, another place, Quran says, "Inna al-mu'minuna ikhwa." You know, Quran is such a beautiful book, and it, it's just like an ocean. That if somebody trying to observe whatever is in the Quran, the life will finish. And subhanallah, the ocean will still be there. Quran says, Innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. Those who know the familiar with the Arabic language, they know what does innama, uh, the, the meaning of innama. It's hasr. Believers are nothing but brothers. And إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى Who is saying this? Allah, the one who revealed this book, He is saying the believers are nothing but they are brothers to each other. 
And, you know, the root of this word, al ukhuwa is wakha, wow, kha, and ya. That means to intend good to other people. To good, to intend good to your brothers. Do we really feel that? Do we really have that feeling when we say someone brother? That actually Quran have that meaning in itself. The innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. The brothers, subhanallah. This is an ummah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has made us ummah. And we all know what are the benefits of unity and what, what are the harms of disunity. But still we rather go to disunity. We put emphasis on unity but we don't unite ourselves. But also in this universe, we find that differences are there. That's a very important point we need to look at. You know, if a mother has five children, they all will be different. Their faces, their fingers, their fingerprints, their abilities, their energies, mindset, they all will be different. But yet they, they still live in one house. They grow together. But they help each other to grow. To play their part. To nurture their future. That's the beauty of unity. That we are different, but still we live together. We understand each other. We respect. That's, that's the fact. And also the fact of this world is, subhanallah, the whole Shia community cannot become Sunni. And the whole Sunni world cannot become a Shia. That's the reality. But however, this is also need to be changed into reality. That we need to learn how to respect each other. That's what we carry from the message of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah, we have got such a beautiful book. We have got one Messenger and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We have got one Kaaba. We have got one Kalima. La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. We have got the same history. But however, still we have got different directions. And, you know, Quran says, وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا you know how important this love is? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Quran to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Allafa bayna qulubihim. That's Allah who has put love in their hearts. Allah has put love in their hearts. You know the environment, the community, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam came. And you know the history of Aus and Khazraj, the tribes at that time, they had 100 years history of fighting with each other. But you also know that how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam established muakhat amongst them. Where he also made Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu to his brother. That muakhad. That ukhuwa. That need to be established today. 
the same route because if we really want to go to heaven and our destination is that and of course that is then footsteps and route will be same the one was 1400 years ago that cannot be changed that doesn't mean that it was love important at that time but not today that doesn't mean that unity was important at, at that time but not today that doesn't mean that worship of Allah and the sincerity was important of, of his time but not our time no if you really want to gain success the route will be same the akhlas we need the same today as well without akhlas it's not possible without oneness worshiping one Allah it's not possible without gaining the proper message of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam it's not possible without unity it's not possible so that we need to reflect upon and then of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ Ya Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam If you spent whatever is there on the earth on the face of this earth maybe diamond, wealth, gold, whatever is there you spend, you give to people it's not possible to join their hearts no this is Allah who has joined their hearts together. That, that's Allah. We need to go back to Allah. Our today's situation is, to be honest, We are serving our, our own little circles little organizations if somebody is in my organization fine if out of that then maybe out of Islam or oh, sometime out of humanity that is the reality we need to change that the difference between us and the companion and the family member of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is that they put hard work to bring people into Islam and we are taking people out of Islam we have got the labels to place to put on that's what we are doing today but we need more knowledge more humbleness to get out of ignorance that with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam had come so that's Allah who has put love amongst us. So let us not leave that love, my brothers and sisters. And finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa jami'an wa la You know, it is some. And also, al asima in Arabic is the capital. This Qur'an, subhanAllah, the beauty of Qur'an is tremendous. We can all rejoice. It's, it's so much. Al-Asima is the capital. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used the word Wa'tasimu. Hold fast. Al-Asima is capital. Capital means that that is the place which run whole country, whole state. If Asima is capital is concurred, the whole country is gone. If somebody attack on the country, as far as they are around the Asima capital, they will be marked as rebels. But once they capture the capital, 
they've, they've got the victory. Now, c country belongs to them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa tasimu bihablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraq. Do not leave this asima, this Quran. Hold fast. Once you lose this, then you are conquered. Then you, then you cannot find your path. You know, yesterday, oh, in the past, I mean, the world was scattered, but the hearts were joined. And today, the globalization is increasing. The, the world is just like a village. And the hearts are departed and separated. So we need to join the hearts again. We need to remove the differences and get together and accommodate everybody. And still, we can respect which is really important. That is the key. With all difference, with all differences, we can still maintain respect. And also, forgiveness. You know, when we differ some, with someone, we still have respect. That is the, that is, there is something which, which is in our morals. So, forgiveness. And also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa said in one hadith, the best dua is the one you do for your brother, brother when he is not there. So in his ghaib, you pray for him. Ya Allah, forgive him. Show him the right path. So that sincerity, when you, when you pray for somebody with the sincerity, when he is not, she is not there. <coughs> That's what, what we need today. But today, to be honest, when somebody is not there, then we are busy in backbiting and other stuff. <clears throat> and also we can visit one, and e one another. That's very important. That removes the barriers. That promote the dialogue, the understanding. And also, as I said, say salam which has also come in hadith and share the gifts and ideas and finally one thing which has been said Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an if you allow me to read that develop in your heart the feeling of love for your people and let it be the source of kindly, kindliness and blessing to them do not behave with them like a barbarian. And do not appreciate to yourself the which belongs to them. Remember that the citizens of the state are of two categories. They are either your brothers in religion or your brothers in kind. They are subject to infirmities and liable to commit mistakes, mistakes. So, forgive others. Insha'Allah, then, of course, I understand the worldwide, what's happening, we may not be able to play a very wide role. But here, we can try our best to what we can do. Just maybe 100 or 150 years ago, the, the, these boundaries were not there. Right? But only one connection was there, that was the La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. And the people had, had a feeling for each other. There were, there were no Nigerian and Syrian and um, Egyptian and, and, and these, were, these titles were not there. But the title was La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Innam al ikhwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to understand each other and also to pass the peace message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to rest of the humanity. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sayri al-mu'mineen wa al-muslimin.